If you've got pasty white complexion like me, you know that it can be very easy to get a sunburn. UV lens is an app that allows you to see when it's the most dangerous to go out into the sun. UV light is what gives you sunburns and at certain times of the day it's more harsh. So you open up the app and it tells me that today from 9.50 a.m. to 4.50 p.m. is when it's gonna be the highest. And I can scroll through here and see that after that, it's gonna go down to moderate and then later in the day it'll be low and of course at night there's none. And that's pretty cool right there, but there's a cool thing where you can put your skin type in here and it'll give you even more information. So I have my skin type in here right now and with no protection, I'm gonna get a sunburn in 31 minutes. But I can go to here and let's say I put an SPF 50 plus on to go for a walk. I apply that and now I can see that I have two hours of protection and the app can even remind me when to reapply. So if you go into the sun a lot and you get easily burned, this is an app that you might want to check out. Google Assistant can be launched by long pressing a home button pretty easily just like that and then you can start talking. If that's not easy enough for you, you want to just launch it from your home screen, there's an app called Assist Me and that's all it does. I just tap this and it's going to open up Google Assistant. I don't have to long press the home button or anything like that. And it's just a quicker and easier way to launch Google Assistant if you're using it a lot. So quick and easy, Assist Me. Better Open With is an app that adds a little bit more customization and features to the default app menu in Android. So when you tap to open a link or something like that, you'll see that little dialogue that asks what kind of app you want to use to open it. This app takes that over and adds some extras. So if you go into the browser here, I have Chrome and Firefox installed and I'm going to select Chrome as my preferred and then you can do a countdown timer. And what this does is for a split second for how many uh, seconds that you have this set, it'll give you the choice to open Chrome or Firefox. And then after that timer runs out, it'll open your preferred app. So now what happens is when I open up a link, I'm gonna see for a split second, I get two choices here and I could choose Firefox if I wanted to use that for this situation. But if I just let it run out, it's gonna open up my preferred app, which is Chrome. So this is cool if there's apps that sometimes you do want to use, but they're not the app that you use most of the time. You still want to have that choice, uh, but you don't want to have to constantly be switching between default apps. So it's called Better Open With. If you listen to music when you go to sleep, you probably use a sleep timer, which will shut off the music after a certain amount of time so that your music doesn't play all night. You can set it for 15 minutes and the music will stop playing at 15 minutes. The problem with that is, if it's in the, right in the middle of a song, your music's just gonna abruptly stop right there, and that could wake you up. Advanced Sleep Timer is an app that does this in a more smart way. You set a specific amount of songs, and it will stop after that many songs have played. It works with apps like Spotify, Google Play Music, and a lot of other popular apps. So all you do is use a plus or minus here. Let's do five songs. You hit start. Start playing music from whatever app you're using, and it will automatically stop after that many songs have played. So it's gonna naturally let the music stop instead of abruptly cutting it off right in the middle. If you listen to music a lot when you go to sleep, this is an app that you should definitely check out. It's called Advanced Sleep Timer. So gifts are really popular nowadays, sending them on Twitter and Messenger apps. Uh, a lot of times the GIF can say it better than words, but GIFs don't have sound. There are videos, but if you want to send just a short snippet of something, Shabam is an app that lets you add sound to GIFs. So you open up the app and you can search for it. Here's the trending tab. There's editor's picks, categories, and then you can sign in and save stuff. So we'll just find a GIF here. This is a, a Katy Perry GIF. Uh, and it plays the GIF, and then when you want to record sound, you just hit this button right here. It shows you the GIF, you can play sound with it, and now it plays my audio over the GIF, and then I can save it and send it to places like that. So if you wanna add some fun little sounds to your GIFs, uh, you wanna do your own little narration for GIFs or whatever, this is a cool app, it's called Shabam. If you're a diehard Android enthusiast, you know that a good change log is important. And this app called Changes is a place where you can see all the change logs for all of your apps. So you install the app and it's gonna get all of your apps that are installed on your phone. So it's organizing these apps by when they were installed slash updated. So here are a few apps that I installed today, so it's posting them here. But if I can scroll down two days ago, Pandora, uh, Slack, and all these apps were updated. Uh, three days ago were a few apps here. Uh, and then it shows a little preview of the change log where I can go right into it, read the full change log. And I just installed this so it's only showing one change log, but as more change logs come in for these apps, 
uh, it's going to add those two here. So then I can see a timeline. You can also change the view. So maybe I don't want to see the change log. I just want to see a list. Then I can go in and look at them like that. You can also change the theme uh, to night mode. So if you like change logs, you know, you're really interested in what apps are getting new features and stuff like that. Changes is a nice handy app to have. Kruma Floats wallpaper is the live wallpaper you can see on my home screen right now. It's kind of a material design animated wallpaper. So right now there's some cool shapes here that are kind of just like pulsating in and out, uh, three different colors. And as I move my phone, it kind of moves around and follows me like a parallax effect. So if we go into the app, uh, you can customize a lot in this app. So if we go to edit here, you can choose the shapes. These are all the shapes that it'll choose from. Uh, and you can just select and deselect the ones that you want. You can do the same thing for these color schemes. Uh, and then you can choose how often it's going to change. So I have it on every home return. So if I go back to my home screen, you can see that it's a different one. Uh, I can open up the app again, go there again, boom, changes again. And there's a couple other settings that you can do in here, uh, but it's just a cool material design animated wallpaper that doesn't use up a lot of battery. Powerline is a nifty app that puts indicators on your screen so you can see them all the time. So you notice at the top of my screen right now, I've got two little bars. I got a blue bar and a green bar. The blue bar is my battery level and the green bar is something called phone addiction. So just how much you use your phone. So let's say I want to add another one. I can change the phone addiction. Here are all the different ones that you can choose from. And in the free version, you can only use two of them at a time. So we're going to go to Wi-Fi and then you can position it. So I have it at the top right now, but you can also put it at the bottom of the screen. Now you can see at the bottom, I have my Wi-Fi signal there um, and I can move it to the top again. But there's a bunch of cool indicators that you can use for this app. So unread messages, uh, storage, download speeds, uh, ringer volume, things like that. You can put them up there or you can put them on the bottom of your screen and see them all the time. You may not know this, but there's actually names for a lot of different stages of the sunset. And Golden Hour is an app that will tell you when those things are happening. So the Golden Hour is like what photographers think of as the perfect lighting, and it happens right around sunset. So the app right now is telling me that from 8.33 p.m. to 9.36 p.m. tonight is the Golden Hour. Uh, but there's other hours like that. So Civil Twilight is the hour 9.15 to 9.49. You have Blue Hour, Nautical Twilight. Um, and this just tells me all the different stages of the day, uh, including day, which is 6.12 a.m. to 9.15 p.m. Um, and I can do different locations. Uh, I can go over to San Francisco. You can add a bunch of different locations here. You can also get notifications if you want to get notified uh, when it's the golden hour and stuff like that. So if you care about the stages of the sun, you like sunset, maybe you're a photographer, this is a handy app that can get you out there when the lighting is perfect. Loopsy is an app that allows you to make cinemagraphs. A cinemagraph is like a blend between a photo and a video. Uh, it's a lot more high quality than a GIF, but it's still moving. So here's an example of one that I made. And you can see that only the water is moving in this image. And that's how it's high quality because only a section of the image is actually animated where the rest is just static. And so I made this with the app. And to do that, uh, you just got to film something. You hold down the record button. So let's see if I can make a quick one here with just a finger moving. And then it's going to stabilize that video and process it for you. And when it's complete, this is the tools that you get. You can animate, you can freeze, and you can change how it loops. So the animate, I'm just going to draw over what I want to be moving in this image. In this case, it's my finger. And if I did something that I didn't want, I can switch to freeze and I can draw over that. Um, but this isn't a, a great example of one, uh, but it just shows you how it works. So then you can tap in the top here to switch how it's animated. Uh, and then when you're done, you just tap the arrow and then you can share it wherever you want or download it. But it's just a really simple way to make these cool cinema graphs. It's called Loopsy. Fast Finder is an app that does just that. It makes it fast to find things. So when you open it up, it's just going to open this search bar overlay over whatever you're doing. And then all you do is you just start typing. So, so I just put in some letters here and you can see that it's bringing up uh, people from my contacts, apps that I have installed, uh, files, a bunch of different things. Um, and you can just launch them from here. 
Uh, and so if you have a hard time like finding things in your app drawer or you don't know where a certain file is, just open up this app, type it in, boom, you can find it and you're on your way. It's called Fast Finder. Forvid is an app that makes it really easy to download videos from any video platform you can pretty much think of. You can see in the bottom here, it's kind of scrolling through all of them, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Daily Motion, etc. And all you do is you put the URL in here and it downloads it. So I already pasted one uh, from Instagram here. There we go. Tap download. Now it's going to open it up in this uh, web viewer here and then I can watch it here or just tap the little download button and now I can download that video to my phone. So if you find a video online that you want to download for uh, safekeeping, you want to watch it online, whatever the reason may be, just open up Forvid, paste the URL and you're good to go. Nine bulbs is a puzzle game and all you have to do is get the correct bulbs lit up. So you have nine bulbs and you have nine buttons underneath those bulbs. And the lines across the top, those are the ones I want to get lit up. So I can use my finger and slide up a little bit and it's gonna tell me that if I tap that button, it's gonna turn those two on. So I do that, it turns those two bulbs on. I don't want this one on, so I'm gonna turn that off. So now I have this one on, which I need. So I can get a little preview here. This is gonna turn these two on, so we'll do that. Turn that one off and there I just completed it. Now I can go to the next. And you have a certain amount of moves that you can use, so you can't just sit here tapping around uh, to beat the level. So let's see, we'll turn this one on, this one on. That one was pretty easy. So you get the idea, it's just about tapping the right buttons, finding the right configuration to get all the light bulbs lit up that you need. 15 Puzzle is a number game with tiles here, and what you do is you slide these tiles around to get all the numbers in the correct order and you can only move one at a time. So I need to get one into this top spot right there, and then I need to get two next to it, and so forth and so on. You just gotta move these around to make room for them. Let's see here. Okay, so that took a while. Uh, you could see that the game is not super easy. Um, and there's different board sizes, so I just did a three by three. You can go all the way up to an eight by eight, which is obviously gonna be a lot more difficult. Um, but that's just the game. You move the tiles around, you can only move one at a time. You gotta figure out the right orientation, move them around uh, to get the numbers where you want. A lot of times you're gonna have to work backwards before you can work forward. Um, it's tricky. And it's fun, it's called 15 Puzzles. Speed is a simple, fast-paced card game that a lot of people have probably played, but Speed West has a cool twist on that game. So it's like the typical game where you have to put your cards down in order. So here's uh, the game, he's putting cards on the top. I can put a queen on top of a king, and then I tap over here to get a new card. And the name of the game is to get through all your cards before your opponent. So I have 16, he has 16 left. Now I can do the seven on here. And now when there's no moves, it will uh, give you new cards on the top like this. Now you see it right there, that was when two cards of the same pop up, uh, it's a draw and a gun popped up. Whoever taps that the fastest gets to shoot the opponent and then all the cards go to their side. So he was faster than me, now I have 23 cards, which is gonna be hard for me to get through. So my opponent won the first one there, and this is the first one to win two games wins. But that's just the quick matchup. You can also go to the map, and this is kind of like a story mode. You start in the bottom here, and then you work your way up through the map, uh, playing different people, and there's different circumstances in some of these matches, uh, and that's how you do that. You can also do two player, which you can have put this on a table somewhere. When your friends sit on one side of the phone, you sit on the other side of the phone, and you play it like a traditional speed game. So if you like cards, you like speed, uh, this is a really fun game. It's pretty addictive, I have to say. I've been playing it quite a bit. Uh, check out Speed West. Bouncy Hoops is an arcade-style basketball game. It's all about bouncing balls into a hoop. So what you're gonna do here is every time you tap the screen, the ball bounces up in the air and it automatically moves towards the hoop. And your goal is to just get the ball in the hoop. Every time you do, more time is added to the clock, as you can see on the top and uh, the time runs down, so if you don't get shots in a row there, uh, I just ran out of time and I only got three baskets. That's the arcade mode, you just try to see how many baskets you can get, 
and you can get like power-ups if you get a bunch in a row and swishes and stuff like that. Uh, there's also a time mode and this you get a minute and you just see how many shots you can make uh, in that minute. Same premise, you just tap the screen, you can collect coins and stuff as you're seeing and those will add time. The hoop moves levels, so here it's really high. Uh, and the next one is going to be low. When the ball bounces off the screen, it just comes back on the other side and you can get it started from there. So it's just a simple bouncing ball arcade game. My best score for the time mode is 94. Uh, you can also uh, unlock different backgrounds and you can unlock different balls as well. And that's called Bouncy Hoops, an addictive basketball game. Racy Rocket is a game all about getting a rocket to the finish line. And you do this by tapping your finger on the screen and then moving it around to aim. Now the different colored walls here do different things. So this red wall, that's gonna kill me right away. I don't wanna touch that. These blue walls, I can just slide across them. So if I touch this blue wall on the bottom here, I'm gonna slide. But before I hit that red line on the other side, I need to press again, and that will put me into like a slow motion, and then I can shoot off in another direction. And now I can just find the blue line all the way to the finish line. Now there are different colors that do different things. You can also bounce the ship uh, and do things like that. But the goal of all these is to just get to the finish line without touching the red line. So here's another level, and here's where I have these purple. Uh, so I can bounce off that, and there I hit the red line again. So we're gonna try to do that again. Cause you can't really see the whole map at once, so you gotta kinda do it by trial and error. Try that one more time. All right, you get the idea. I'm not very good at it. Maybe you'll be better. It's called Racy Rockets. Zinc Colors is a color matching, uh, color mixing puzzle game. So what you gotta do is get these color drops to the color targets. You can see I have a red and a blue dot and a red and a blue target. Now when you move, you move one space at a time and the dots move together. So you kinda gotta use them to get them in the right orientation, use the walls and stuff like that. So there I lost because I combined the red and the blue to make purple and I don't need purple for that level. So let's try that again. Okay, now I can move the red up, the blue over, and there we go. I use the walls to make sure that they don't mix but to keep them in their spot so I can move them around. Now here's a level where I do need to mix colors. So I have orange in the middle there. I need to mix these yellow and red dots to make the orange. The blue dots don't really matter to me. They're just kind of in the way. So I can combine those. There we go, orange. So that's the general idea of this game. You're gonna mix colors and get the dots through the targets. Calculator the Game is a game that takes place in a calculator with a cute little personality. So the goal is to make the number, which is in the goal, so that's 64 right now, and I have four moves to do that. And for each level, the keys on the keyboard are different. So for this one, I have a plus two and a times four, and also have some hints that I can use. So I have to use the plus two and the times four to make 64 in four moves. See if I can do that. So there you go, I got it. And now a new one comes up, so now I have five is the goal, Three moves, I'm starting with four, and I have a divide by three, a plus three, and a times three. And so the same thing, gotta get five in three moves. There we go. So that's the game, it gets harder and harder as you go, um, but it's just a really fun uh, little simple math game. Not too hard, easy enough that you can do uh, without having to think too hard, uh, but it's fun. It's called Calculator the Game. HH Tan is an interesting take on Snake. So in this game, you have to get the snake longer, of course, but you also have these bricks on the screen that you have to get, and the bricks make you shorter. So to start off, you just gotta get these numbers, uh, dots here, so I can get the six, get the 22, and you can see that's making me longer, um, but if I go over to one of these bricks, let's say this one up here, which has five on it, that's gonna remove five of the dots from my snake, get four, Four. So you gotta kind of balance because you do wanna get the snake as long as you can for the high score, uh, but you also gotta get rid of these bricks. So you're constantly balancing between adding and subtracting from the snake, and of course you can't run into yourself, you can't run into the walls, all those classic things. And you saw right there, I was starting to go uh, too low. You can just move away from the brick um, before uh, getting all of it out. 
Um, so I just died there. Um, but that's the basic idea of the game. It's really kind of frenetic because uh, you're constantly moving, constantly trying to see how many dots on the end of your snake, trying to get longer, but you don't want to get too long. Um, and then you use the bricks to get shorter, but you don't want to get too short. So it's just a really fun game. You have a lot to think about, uh, and it's very addictive. It's called HH Tan.